On today's episode, EVs are starting to kill the auto parts industry. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. This interesting little part will be familiar to thousands of you out there that tinker with internal combustion engines. It's a valve. Now every modern automotive engine has either two or four of these per cylinder, a matched set of intake and exhaust valves, but they're more accurately called poppet valves because they open and close the combustion chambers through cylindrical linear guides, logically called valve guides, under the action of a rotating cam. Now they've been a basic part of automotive engineering technology since the start of the automobile, and they are an interesting manufacturing challenge, both because of the way they're manufactured and the tolerances they must be manufactured to. Now these things are not made in a single piece, they're made in two parts, with the head and the stem friction welded together, and tolerances to which this thing has to be made are, well, they're very difficult to achieve. To seal properly in the combustion chamber valve seat, concentricity has to be nearly perfect, and both the valve face and the stem must be ground to form a gas-tight seal at the face, and also allow just enough clearance in the valve guide to allow free movement with minimal oil passage past the stem. So why am I bringing this up? Well, the recent closure of a European automotive valve making factory recently came to my attention by way of the asset auction of the production machinery. Now, the production equipment is specific to valve making. Head stem straightening machines, length cutters, friction welders, bead turning lathes, underhead and seat grinders, groove grinders, and automatic hard facing systems. Equipment that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars new has starting bids of under $500 per unit. And I frankly don't expect a great deal of interest in that equipment either. With the rapid rise in electric vehicle sales plus government incentives worldwide, we're rapidly moving into a global automotive industry where annual auto sales growth is assured, but internal combustion engine volumes will be flat to falling. I don't expect to see expansion of engine parts production to increase global capacity from this point forward unless that production capacity is designed around multi-purpose, multi-axis machining centers with advanced robotics. The auto parts factory of the future will likely be making a wide variety of products for both internal combustion and electric vehicles, and probably for other industries as well. Parts production has come full circle. It began a century ago with general purpose machine tools which were simply tasked with making auto parts. Then high volume mass production demanded a new generation of custom machines designed to do single tasks and do them at high speed and low cost. That's the kind of equipment being auctioned in Germany now, machines which can only be used for making automotive valves. This kind of mass production equipment is a one trick pony. And in the case of machines like these, I expect that a significant proportion of it will not find a new home and may end up a scrap metal. And unlike the vehicles that these machines built parts for, no one is going to create a museum dedicated to automotive valve making technology. So the equipment and the decades of human expertise that evolved to make valves is going to disappear. That's progress and it's coming faster than we think. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.